My name is Matt Malala. I'm a development manager at Oracle, and um, I'm here with... Uh, I'm a Gabby Rubin. I'm a product manager at Oracle. Yeah, and um, Gabby and I are going to co-present. I know it probably only listed me, but that's okay. I recruited Gabby to come in here and help me out because we're going to tell you a story about data. And that story doesn't always include just one person sitting behind their computer working on uh, data, right? And we're going to show you how uh, people who have a job to do are going to leverage data to do their job. The, the, the analytics is not their job. Their job is something else, but they're going to leverage that data, and they're going to leverage all their tools that they use when they're on the road, when they're in the office, um, Android devices, iOS devices, laptops, the whole bit, just like probably all of your users or all of you. So uh, without further ado, let's get started, and Gabby's going to start off going over um, some overview of OAC and um, some of the concepts that we're going to hit on in this, this uh, presentation, and then we're going to jump into demo. So slides at first. Might be boring. Hopefully not. Gabby will keep us entertained. Um, and then we'll jump into the demo, which will be exciting. Okay. So uh, just to start with the most boring th thing that we have, that's the one where we're going to show you some things which are not, which are not yet production, so uh, keep that in mind. Uh, but most of it is, uh, is available. Uh, and uh, as Matt said, we are going to talk about how we actually, our analytics enable people to do their job throughout the day. Uh, from uh, an analytic perspective, we recently introduced Oracle Analytic uh, Cloud. Um, and, um, you know, it follows our concept, which is, uh, you know, organizations and people today need to cope with uh, a lot of uh, feeds of analytics. You know, if uh, in the past it was mainly around the database and the applications that we have, today there are a lot of uh, different uh, uh, channels in which uh, information gets gathered in the organization. Um, there are also uh, different technologies that are being, that uh, are emerging and are helping us to handle those different, different type of, uh, of information like uh, streaming, big data, and so on. Uh, but uh, the challenge is, is that um, in many cases, the tools that we need to, uh, to use in, in order to consume those data sources are fragmented and uh, require special skill set. And it seems that in, in, um, in many cases, we shifted from um, what used to be Enterprise BI, we wanted to go to self-service analytics, but uh, now we are dependent on a different set of skill set within the organization, like uh, data scientists and data steward, to be able to bring those data sets uh, together for us. With Oracle Analytic Cloud, what we want to do is really to offer a one solution that can access all those different sources for you uh, through a single platform. Uh, so you don't need to learn each specific uh, technology if you want to get information out of it. You really have uh, just a single platform that you can access to, and behind the scene it goes and gets the information from all dif these uh, different sources. Another key element from our perspective is to really enable the business users and the business analysts to, to ask questions and interact with the data uh, in order to, uh, to get their job done. Uh, and, and again, not be dependent on very specialized skill sets that might be bottlenecks in their way to the information that they want to consume. From an architecture perspective, uh, Oracle Analytic Cloud can, um, again, can uh, uh, connect and gather information from various sources uh, and, and uh, even enable you to move it if you want into a data warehouse or a data lake. We have several layers of the technology. The first one is the catalog, when we um, index and, uh, and gather all the different information that you have, so you'll be able to search and ask questions, and uh, we'll give you the visibility that you need uh, to the data. Uh, we have the second layer is the ability to do transformations and enrichments uh, to the data that you gather. So if you want to, uh, to change the way that you look at the data and uh, transform it, you can do that within the stack uh, itself. And lastly, of course, the data analysis itself that allows you to uh, explore and visualize and, of course, share and collaborate with others the insights that you find. 
Uh, from the user's perspective that we look uh, for, we, we, when we design our product, we, looked, uh, we look at three key personas in the organization. The first one is the data analyst, which uh, those are the guys that are very comfortable with, uh, with technology, especially analytic, uh, business analytic technology, but they also understand the, the business. So in, in most cases, they are the authors of uh, information that other consumes. They define the metrics, uh, and they know how to connect to the data sources or interact with IT to, be, to get access to those sources. Uh, so they'll build the, the different visualization that other users will consume, or they will explore the data looking for, uh, for information. The second uh, uh, type of user is the business leaders or the business uh, users. Um, those are mainly consumers of information. But there isn't anything today which is really truly a, a static consumer. Uh, if in the, in the past, those type of users were using uh, uh, you know, printed reports or uh, later on consume dashboards, now they want to be able to be a bit more interactive. They want to be able to ask the next question. They want to be able to get information for, back from the system. And outside of the boundaries of a, a, a pre-built dashboard or a report that was created for them. Real quick, Gabby, who, who here um, distributes PDFs or images to all their users? Send them via email. I was on mute. Send them via email. So we got a few hands. I, I think it's probably, or, or maybe some of you guys are being shy or tired, but we find that tons of people just decide that they're going to write a report and send it via email. And then when someone has questions, they send a reply, and then someone gathers more data. And so that's really the, the concept that most people are in right now. Um, we can continue that morning exercise. And who, who would identify himself as a business analyst in the room? Someone who authors information and explore data, build visualizations? Okay. Don't be shy. Yeah. It's, you can stretch. It's early morning. Um, lastly, there are the, uh, the developers. And um, the developers, from our perspective, are the enablers of technology in some cases for those two uh, user group. Uh, to, to some extent, our key focus in our product is really the analysts and the users. The developers are also almost an extension of, of us because they will be able to take the technology that we bring and maybe package it in a different way for their users. Now, it might be that uh, um, you, know, you have your home, homegrown portal in your organization or, or, a, or, a, or a SaaS application that you want to put analytic on that web page. Uh, so we allow them to embed analytics from our pl platform or visualization on those pages or consume the entire capability as, uh, as a platform to APIs and SDKs. Um, but again, all of that is, is built in order to serve the business user and the business analyst, uh, which are the one that really needs to get, uh, you know, uh, to, to get to find the uh, business answers and do and, and make decisions based on the data that they see. Uh, within the IT cloud, we have uh, uh, data visualization. The data visualization allows uh, the users to uh, have a very intuitive and interactive in, uh, exploration experience with the data. Uh, you can uh, connect to multiple sources. You can uh, uh, build uh, very quickly visualization using the, all the capabilities that we have, and everything is synchronized out of the box. Uh, you can create, very, create those stories and share them with other users that they will either go ahead and enhance them or just consume them on day to day. Uh, in order to enable that and uh, give the users the capabilities to, uh, to access all those type of information that they have, we connect today to multiple data sources. And the data sources that you need to connect in, uh, uh, in, a, in a common enterprise are very, uh, are vary between applications that they want to connect to. There might be databases, and again, also it's a big data, no SQL type of sources, uh, as well as files and, uh, and, and other type of information. 
Uh, all of that needs to be accessible, again, to a single platform and a single method to connect to different uh, sources. Are you guys all challenged with the uh, problem of having data in tons of different sources, or yes. everyone, everyone, no, no one has clean one spot, one, one stop shopping? <laughs> okay, we figured, loaded question. Okay, and now I mentioned earlier that we allow you also to transform data within uh, the platform. The concept there is really to, uh, if uh, what we see users do in many cases, uh, they, uh, they take two, three Excel files and then they, uh, within Excel, they merge the data together, maybe they add some metrics, and uh, at the end result, they have a bigger or, or, or a combined Excel file which they use as the base for their analysis. Uh, the problem with that is that once you have done that uh, and you share it with someone, when someone asks you, okay, I want to see how you got to those numbers, it's really challenging to show him your work and, you know, did I really uh, did all the right thing to combine the data together? or if I send it to someone else and he wants to refresh the data, uh, his ability to trace my steps and do exactly the same thing might be, uh, might be limited if he doesn't really see or knows what I've done. So in order to accommodate that, within the tool we, we added um, a concept called data flows that allows you to do those type of simple transformation that someone will do in Excel, uh, but in, in a very visual way that will be traceable for other users. So if I'm going to send you uh, my, uh, my visualization, you'll be able to see how I got to those numbers. If you want to uh, refresh the numbers from the system and retrace those steps, you can basically run the same flow. So the concept is, is, is built to really enable someone who is an analyst uh, to do the simple transformation, but in a way that it is traceable and can easily be refreshed uh, back from the source. Sorry. Right. To get used to the moving forward thing. Uh, another element that uh, is part of Identity Cloud is uh, some of you know uh, SBase, and SBase is part of Identity Cloud. And what we, uh, and the reason that SBase is part of the, of the product is uh, in, uh, in most analytic systems, the, the data is uh, mostly, mostly being consumed. Uh, so it's read-only sources, you connect to, you either bring data from another application or connect to the application, connect to uh, a data warehouse or a data lake, uh, but you don't, you don't really have the flexibility to change the numbers or to interact with the numbers. SBIS uh, provides those capabilities. SBIS allows us to be able to take a data set uh, and create different scenarios on top of the, those data sets and being able to change the numbers and do a bit of a what if analysis or sensitivity analysis to, to see what might be the outcome if my, uh, if my numbers would be different. And uh, using SBase uh, alongside with uh, analytics allows us to, uh, to provide that level of interactivity uh, for, uh, for the users and get them to yet another level in the way that they're analyzing their data and, and not just being consumers but also have the ability to interact uh, with, uh, with data. Who here is uh, SBase users? Or okay. Pretty, pretty very good. So later today, you are also welcome. There are going to be two SB sessions uh, at 11 and 4.45. Now, the other aspect that uh, we are introducing, and there is a lot, uh, actually there's a lot of things going on in that space, but uh, one of the challenges that we, that we see people having is that you, you bring a new data set in, and um, you need to start finding or exploring the information. In many cases, uh, the path of exploration, especially when you are connecting to something that has a lot of attributes and measures, and you're trying to uh, find maybe what's, uh, what's really the, uh, the cause for a certain behavior of data, um, you, in many cases, it's very biased and uh, experienced because you need to guess what's my starting point and you need to start drag and dropping uh, attributes into a canvas. 
What we are adding is the ability for the system to suggest to you what might be interesting in your data. So as you connect to a new data source, we'll be able to show you some insights that we came out with uh, that finds interesting patterns in your data. And interesting might be uh, something simple like an outlier. You know, you have one product that behaves differently than other products. Uh, however, the system needs to be smart enough to filter what we call noise. Uh, if that one product that behaves differently is uh, really 0.1% of your revenue, it's no longer interesting. Uh, and it's not something that you really need to focus on if I can find something which is, which is a higher priority. So we'll generate uh, those type of, uh, of insights for you and you can use them as, as your starting point for analysis or maybe uncover for, uh, uncover for you things that might be hidden in your, in, in, within your data. And another way for exploring is uh, using of uh, language, uh, either by typing or voice, and we'll show some of that. Uh, the ability to ask questions of, uh, from the system um, using natural language is uh, implemented into all of, our, uh, all of our products from the browser to desktop to, uh, to mobile devices. And uh, of course on the mobile and, and desktop, usually it's much more of a typing, you want to search and so you type your questions in. Uh, in mobile, uh, you can either type or you can even use your voice. And uh, that's another way that we can jumpstart into, your, uh, your, into your, uh, uh, your exploration process because at the end of the, the day, our goal is uh, to get you faster to the question that you need to get answered. And if, you, if we can find ways to make it quicker for you uh, and ask the question in a more uh, intuitive way, uh, then uh, we achieved, uh, if we, we achieved, uh, hopefully we achieved your goal in that. With that, we'll talk a bit about uh, our mobile offering, and I'll pass it to Matt. All right, yeah, so one of the things we're gonna showcase today is the idea of, of people on multiple devices, right? People on the go. So I wanted to talk a little bit about our mobile strategy overall and then dive into some of our newest mobile products. This, this won't be a deep dive on those mobile products, so you, know, you won't get a deep dive, but you'll get a glimpse of what they can do and you can follow up with us for more info. But overall we have a, a really a two-pronged strategy that it's, it's not anything special here, right? Every company in the world should be doing this if they're not, and they mostly are. Is you have mobile web, which is the use case of someone has a phone and they want to connect to something, they go to the web page in Safari or Chrome, and it just works. It's a good experience, it's adaptive and responsive. It doesn't look like a giant web page kind of crammed into a tiny screen. It responds to that. And you guys probably see this every day when you go to uh, your bank website or you go to you know, a shopping website. They all kind of do this. Pinterest, Facebook, it's, it's just the way it works. And of course we have to have a really great mobile web experience. And so all of our content in DV is mobile web enabled and will run on your device browser just perfectly fine. We think there's something special about an app experience and we know this from data and we know this from our users and in the market, right? People love apps, they install tons of apps, that's why the app stores make billions and billions of dollars. Um, and so we have uh, an analytic app strategy and that really has a two-pronged approach. We have Mobile HT, which is our existing app that's been around for a long time, that's really um, allowing our customers to continue to leverage their investments. Um, they may have made an investment in uh, OBI or Oracle Business Intelligence, and they have older versions. And you know, I know we talk about the cloud all the time, but you guys might not have made the move, or you're just thinking about making a move, or it's going to take a little while. And that's going to really help protect your investment. All of the newer content will run just fine in that. Also all of your legacy content or your classic content will run just fine in that. So if you created Oracle Business Intelligence reports, um, dashboards, scorecards, I'm trying to think of some, some of the, I guess, legacy products, uh, BI Publisher reports, you can view those in there. It's really a consumption tool and it gives you a little bit better experience than a mobile web experience. Um, then we started and we introduced two new uh, uh, mobile uh, apps called Day by Day and Synopsis. You can jump to the next screen. And these apps are really special. So we kind of took a step back and we started looking at the market um, and what people do on mobile devices and what our competitors do on mobile devices. And we kind of thought everyone's doing it wrong in analytics, right? The, the model kept 
going with this, I'm gonna build a report and then I'm gonna put it on a phone and let someone consume it, right? Which has been the way it's been going for years, right? I'm gonna take that report that was built on a 24 inch monitor and like I said, we have to adapt it to the screen and we try and make it fit. And it really wasn't the experience users who are on the go really wanted. And we started looking at apps like Twitter and Facebook and Snapchat and uh, believe it or not, Tinder, you know, not too much though, because I didn't want my wife to get suspicious that I was you know, out on Tinder or something. But we were looking at the, the use cases and the metaphors that they were using and leveraging to be able to you know, drive analytic on a mobile device for a consumer class of users. And so day by day is a new class of apps, and you'll see this today, that really anticipates the need of the user. The idea there is that we're gonna deliver analytics to you in context when you need it. You're on a phone. We know, technically the phone knows where you're at. It knows if you're running, walking, driving on a train. I mean, you may not believe this, but there's tons of sensors in that device that are uh, tracking everything from barometric pressure to speed to, you know, how, you, when you bring it up to your face, you, you ever notice your phone just turns on? You know, they're, 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 they're building technology in there to do all that. And also, guess what? Your whole daily life is on that phone. You have your calendar, your contacts, your friends, your emails, who texts you the most, all that stuff's on that device. And so what we wanna do is really blend your world on the phone into your analytic world. So when a, a, a business user or someone who's on the go who really doesn't care about the data, they don't care about that list of data sources, they're not a developer, they just want analytics, they wanna to go to their meeting and when they go to their meeting they wanna look in their app and they wanna see the data that they need for that meeting. And I'll show some of that today and, and uh, you know, in, in uh, some other sessions this week we can get more into it. So Synopsys was an interesting app that we also released. Both of these apps are GA today. Day by Day runs on Oracle Analytics Cloud, so if you want a reason to go to the cloud, that's your reason, um, among other things, but that's the main reason. Uh, Synopsys is a, a great tool that's free. And I know you guys are like, yeah, right. You guys are Oracle, it's not free. It's free, your kids could download it, anyone can use it, it's not just a demo when they download it. If you have an Excel spreadsheet or any text file that has data, you can instantly analyze that on your phone. That data and that analytic is 100% offline at that point. All of the analytics occur on the phone. We actually took an analytic engine and built it on the phone from the ground up so you can do analysis. Now look, it's not gonna be enterprise, you're not gonna take a data warehouse and load it onto your phone, it just doesn't make sense. But there is this need, as much as we preach, you know, let's not have Excel hell and let's not have all this Excel stuff, there is this need for people just get spreadsheets still. I mean, I hate to say it, you get an email with a spreadsheet and you wanna analyze it, and guess what, you're jumping on a plane or you're on the go and you just wanna, you know, one thumb, using your phone walking around, I see people all day at this conference doing it, be able to, you know, analyze data and we'll show that today too. Um, and some of the stuff I'll show, is GA and some of the stuff I'll show might be coming soon and I'll try and point that out as I go. All right, so let's set up the use case. Uh, uh, we work for Flyco. We are the second largest drone manufacturer and this is an aggressive, fast growing market. I mean, we've all seen UPS is gonna start delivering packages via drone or, or Amazon. Um, and, and we need to beat our number one competitor, which is DJ High, okay? And so, um, next slide. So Edie, who will be me, I'll try my best, um, she's a founder. She's totally smart and passionate, um, and she's constantly on the road. She does not care about how data is stored or query or the troubles with getting it or the fact that it's unstructured or not clean. She just wants an answer, right? She's on the road. She uses OAC and day by day to keep a close eye on her company results, okay? Um, the quarter is closing. She needs to know what's happening and why and wants it instantly, okay? And uh, I'll be uh, Dave. 
Now, as you can see, when we uh, tried to build the personalities of the story, we had to come up actually with active imagination as to who is our alter ego. So uh, Matt came up with Edie, which is uh, a, a nice lady who, is, uh, who, who built her own company. Uh, I'm still a product manager, and the only difference is that I have hair. <laughs> so that's basically my scope of imagination here. Um, while uh, Edie is on the road, going to a, on her way to the trade show, I'm back in the office, I stayed, I'm working in Flyco for 18 months, and I'm now uh, supervising, supervising our new release, so I stayed back, uh, and I'm using data visualization to analyze and monitor some of the uh, product-related information. All right, so, you know, success is going to require an effective collaboration between Dave and Edie and, you know, a whole bunch of valuable business insights so that, again, the key point is I'm not trying to, to, to build a chart. The goal here with these users is not to build a chart. The goal is to solve a problem, and I need that chart or I happen to need that data to solve that problem, and that's really the key point to make. Let's see how it goes. So we're going to fumble through this. And just some... Fair warning, we're displaying multiple phones and live demo, so we'll see how this goes, and hopefully we don't have to restart too much. So, all right, so I'm going to take on my best ED persona. Um, yeah, well, you guys see my passcode. <laughs> um, and I've, I've launched day by day. And actually, let me start here. So I'm, I'm ED, I'm, I'm at the airport. Um, I, I want to check on the quarter. It's about to close, so I'll launch day by day. And what you see in the day by day feed is all the business analytics that are important to Edie. She's kind of uh, used the app for a while. She's managed and done a bunch of searches, and I'll get into some details on this, but it won't be a full day by day demo. But these analytics are the things that are most important to Edie. And another user would have a different set of analytics. And these are delivered based on her usage of the app. Right? So she can either decide what goes directly in that feed or the, the things that are given to her. And as I'm scrolling through the feed, I notice in 2017, which I'm concerned about, and we're closing out October real soon, the, the, you know, the, the sales pipeline should be closed, we should be hitting our numbers. October looks really low, okay? But I really need to get to the details of that. So I'm going to do some analytics um, without knowing about x-axis, y-axis, data, dimensions, attributes, or any of that stuff. So I'm going to go ahead into my search, and I'm going to do a search. Now, if I wanted to, I could just type. And we talked about I could do sales, and it's going to start prompting me for, for things that represent sales, and I could type that, and it'll just give me a number because I wanted sales, so might as well just see sales. So that's, that's not really that great, and I'm on my phone, and I'm on the fly, so why don't I just speak the queries? So I'm going to go ahead and look for some, some uh, data in 2016 to see that, uh, why is October low? Maybe it's a seasonality thing that I wasn't aware of. You know, I kind of had this quick reaction to a chart I saw, but let's dig in. Sales by region by month in 2016. So let's see how this happens. Turns out. So I just spoke to it. Um, I stumbled through it a little bit, and it's going to give me some charts. So, first chart that comes up, I notice something. Um, if I go into this chart, I can start tapping. I usually see things are usually low seasonality wise last year in September, but you know, when I get up into November and October, it's actually trending up. So, I'm, right away, I'm noticing the difference between seasonality there. I'm noticing the difference between what I saw before. What, what, Jack is laughing. He's laughing at my alerts. Oh, uh oh. <laughs> no. you, want, you want to hide that? No, nothing, to, cool. nothing to worry about? Mm -hmm. All right, very good. Live demo, right? It's good times. Um, so now let me try and figure out what's going on in 2017. I know that 2016 showed me that things are trending up. And if I really like this, this information, I, I want to see this card all the time, I can just tap here and I can say add it to my smart feed. Okay? And we'll, so that'll be on my feed every time I go into it. Um, let me do another quick search. Sales by month and category in 2017. So now I'm looking a little more specific. I'm going to dig into category, which is, is one of the, the ways I sell, right? I sell by category. And um, let me just actually change this to a bar chart. 
So just a quick switch of visualizations. Line charts are great, but when there's a lot of categories, it, it tends to get, you know, a little hard for me to follow. And you know, it, what it, what's great is it returns a lot of different options here. So it took all of the measures and attributes that I spoke, I didn't really know that they were measures and attributes, and it combines them into a set of charts that should be best for me. Um, and I noticed that there's a downward trend in one of the categories, toys. So I'm concerned about toys. So let's kind of dig in a little further. Sales by month and product for toys in 2017. Sales by month and product for toys in 2017. So, you know, you saw that the voice fail, right? So how many people use Surrey or Google now, right? Sometimes you have to redo it, but who cares? Right? There's no cost to this, right? It just, it's just, you know, returns really quickly. So look at this. I, you know, there's, there's, it's a no brainer here. I'm spotting the downward trend. I see my toys category, which I can see is one of my largest categories. Um, you know, obviously when I look at the, the category of toys, I have drones and fidget spinners. And, you know, <laughs> drones is where I'm making all the money. I mean, fidget spinners are hot, but they're like $4, you know, or they're, they're, they're almost a giveaway now. Actually, I think they're a giveaway in one of the booths there. Um, but drones are where I'm going to make my real money and they're real high margin items. So this is where I want to do my investigation. So I can tap in here. And again, if I want to uh, visualize this different, I can change the chart type to a bar or an area or whatever I like. You know, it could be a preference or it helps me see the data better. Um, and you know, I see that I have this big drop in uh, you know October drones. So um, I need to I need to get to the bottom of this. I don't have a good answer. So I need to collaborate with Dave. So I'm going to go ahead and share this card and I'm going to share it with Dave. So Dave's in my system here and, and I'm going to say what is going on with drone. Look at that, even new drone. Um, um, and then actually I'm going to, uh, oh no, no. This one more thing. Oh, why is my keyboard not up? Oh, here we go. I want English keyboard. All right. I wanted to do an emoji. Very important. I'm going to take the time to do an emoji. Because we all do emojis. I need an angry. This is like angry, sad, right? So I'm going to send that today. Okay. Um, it's very important because of two reasons. One, we all use them, whether we like to admit it or not. <laughs> two, I demanded from a development perspective that we support emojis. And my product manager for mobile is cracking up. Um, all right, so, so I, my job's done. I'm getting ready to board a plane. Not, not done, but I'm like freaking out a little bit, but I can't really go any further. I need help from Dave. Okay, just let me, let me tell Eddie that I'm on it before I'll go ahead and start, so she'll be relaxed. You relaxed? Yes, I'm okay, relaxed. Okay, good. So I'm at my desk and I get a notification and I'm, uh, I decide to, I need to get in and check what's going on. So I have a data set here that uh, have my, uh, my orders activity. Let me see if uh, actually what uh, Eddie is seeing is, uh, is actually true and, and try to find out what's going on. So I'll take our sales and uh, let's look at it uh, based of uh, months. And I want to see really if we get some kind of a downward uh, action here. Um, the best thing, I think I'll do line and... Hmm. I wonder if it's time to answer. Okay, here we go. Uh, but uh, wait a second, let me drop into color, which is, and this is my visual grammar to manage the, the chart, so I want uh, to color the different years to see the, the behavior. And uh, we can see that uh, usually in 2016, uh, this is where we are supposed to take and, uh, you know, sales need to go up, but we are actually going down, which is uh, a bit strange. So um, if you look based on, pod, on, on uh, categories, uh, in sales, uh, maybe I can see something there. Uh, it shows me the sales for each one. I'll go ahead and and so that just so it'll be able to see. 
And of course, uh, as we said, toys is our biggest category. Um, I can, uh, everything that I do here is now uh, interconnected, interconnected, so I can decide that this visualization will be, will be my filter. So if I want to look at a specific uh, category now, all I need to do is to click on the category in one chart and it will filter the other chart. Uh, and uh, if I want to focus, let's say I want to focus only on toys and drill down into the specific products, I can now see fidget spinners and drones, of course, and the same thing applies here. If I'll click on drones, I'll be able to see that, yes, drones is definitely uh, going down. Uh, in order to figure out what's going on, I decided I have a, a Twitter feed that I'm, uh, that I'm um, that I'm getting every week about uh, how we, how our industry and our products look in Twitter. So let me add my Twitter feed here, and maybe I can start analyzing that. So I'm going to add a new data source, and I don't have it in the system, so I'm going to bring it out for my uh, desktop, which is where um, my I'm creating it. So as I bring a new source, it shows me the source, said, okay, well, this is what we found. I actually want to tell him, no, this one is actually a measure for me, and go ahead and add that. And now there is a new, de a new data source in the system that I can uh, both analyze and share uh, with, uh, with other users. Uh, without further delay, I want to jump back into my visualization. It let me start analyzing my feed. So I have, uh, on the feed, I have uh, sentiment, which is, uh, are people talking positively, negatively, or natural about a certain topic? And, um, and I have instances, how many people are talking about that? So if I'll select both, and I'll say, okay, well, I want uh, to pick a visualization. I can also have the system to, to, to pick for me what's the best visualization, but I want to see a donut. And I can see overall in, the, in what I'm monitoring, there is a huge negative sentiment, which is this big uh, yellow, er, sorry, green area. Um, let's, try, let's try and find out what are people actually talking about. So if I'll take the keywords and the instances again, and uh, I'll, uh, I want to see what is called a tag cloud. Tag cloud will basically take the word, the keyword that we have, and will show me to, um, you know, how much people um, are talking about each one of the topics. And again, similar to what I've done before, I can use that one as a filter, and I can already see big keywords coming in. So this is our company. People talk about FAA and crash and regulation. So something has, is is happening. Uh, but I want to know also when it happened, so I'll take uh, the day and the normalized tweets and the sentiment and, oops, and just put it down here for me because I want to see it over, over days and again I think line will be better for my scenario and I'll place these two. So overall, I see that on Wednesday, there was a big growth in negative sentiment talking about uh, drones in general. And if I, uh, if I click uh, on drones, I, I can see that, uh, uh, that while, I'll be able to see in a second. You see that uh, there wasn't a lot of activity until Wednesday, and it was mainly uh, positive, but then something happened and a big negative uh, sentiment just started to grow. In respect to uh, regulation, which is, uh, which is high, we see that people were thinking negatively about regulation, but now they're starting to think positively about that. So something definitely changed. Now the key thing for me is uh, also to see uh, to what extent my company is, uh, is in impacted. But before I do that, I want to find out a bit more about these keywords. So I'll take these keywords and I'll see, maybe there is something on the news about it. And now we go to uh, the, the completely, uh, we couldn't fake the news, so we faked a screenshot of the news. Uh, and I can see that uh, what happens is, is that the drone actually crashed uh, on the White House lawn, which uh, if you follow news, it's actually, it's actually happened in reality. Uh, if you, uh, was it last year? 
Yeah, I don't, I don't remember <laughs> okay. exactly, but... Uh, anyway. So we did find a feed about uh, drones crashing on Wiser. So I'm coming back and say, well, but uh, it wasn't our drone, it was DJ High drone, uh, which is our competing company. And, and uh, you can see that, yes, they get a lot of the negative sentiment, but they are the biggest players. So maybe they drive, and maybe because of that, our drone sales are going, on, are going down. So uh, if I look at my own company, Flyco, um, let's see if we are getting impacted by that. Uh, not that much. Uh, people don't, uh, people actually uh, who are natural actually don't talk much about us. You know, positive is fairly stable, and then I, uh, the negative one is not that much. I think we are not getting a lot of the negative vibe, but uh, we are impacted by something that is impacting our own industry. So I need to go back and I need to let uh, Eddie what, uh, what I found. Uh, so she'll be able to take uh, whatever decisions she want is, uh, I check the Twitter feed. Uh, it is not us, it is me and me crash. I think you can go with that. And then uh, once uh, Eddie is a bit impatient, uh, yeah, we only have 17 more minutes to go before a flight. Uh, so with that, I'm, uh, I'm feeling my job is done. I can go back and uh, do my, uh, my daily job, uh, which uh, I'll carry on and I'll let Eddie do her thing. Yeah, and so Eddie's a little bit frustrated with Dave for a couple of things. It's, it's actually Edie. Um, he keeps calling, Edie. He keeps Edie, calling her Eddie. Um, but <laughs> also, he didn't give her, you know, something actionable, so she has to go do it herself. Just like always, the founder has to pick it up and run with it. So Edie's gonna leverage Synopsys, and I'm gonna show you a new feature that's coming soon in Synopsys, and I'm gonna grab that same data source, that Twitter um, information that, that Dave was working on, so I'm gonna connect directly to my OAC instance. I'm gonna go ahead and log in um, as Edie. So like I said, Synopsys is free for everyone, and you can use Excel files. But one of the big benefits to Synopsys with OAC is you can grab data sets that were created in OAC and analyze them right on your phone. So I'll grab that Twitter feed. It loaded it up really fast. It's now 100% of my phone. I'm boarding my flight. I don't need connectivity anymore. I can start doing some analytics. So um, just to give you an overview of Synopsys, it gives you a quick summary card here. This is considered a project. I can flip through and maybe see some trends, but I need to dive into the details. And uh, I'm gonna look at the normalized um, data so that I can really see a breakdown by day. And I can see, uh, right here is my daily breakdown. I kind of see the same trend that Dave was seeing, but let's go ahead and uh, you know add in some, some more information. So let's go ahead and take in and add in the, the sentiment. And um, actually I'm gonna make this a stacked bar chart. Um, I can switch it around, see it other ways. I can see my positive, negative, and neutral. Um, if I want, I can go back here. Um, I can look at you know the actual you know tweet instances and really drill into the details. Again, look at this by day. Come here, and you know I'll just throw a bunch of stuff on there. We'll look at the keywords and we'll stack that. So uh, some of this stuff is coming soon. Some of this stuff is available today. Um, uh, the OAC connection is coming soon, so, so don't try and connect yet. Um, but let's say I get to a point where I, I need to turn this into an opportunity, right? I'm a founder, I always figure out ways around this stuff, you know, we're losing sales. Let's turn this into an opportunity. So now I need to interact with my social media manager and my press department. You know, I want to issue a press release that, hey, we're the safest drones around. Let's actually turn this into a positive. Now, th those users don't have any of these apps. They don't leverage them. So I'm just gonna go old school, okay? But I could just quickly share right from here and I could share this chart and you know, I'll, I'll choose uh, Gmail, but I could actually text it or whatever and I could send an email, hey, let's do a uh, press release. You know, I'd probably describe it more than that and just ship that off to my, my uh, 
social media manager, maybe my, my uh, PR department, and really get some press going about how we're the safest drones around. So Edie then boards her flight, or is on the flight, and you know, connected to Wi-Fi, shot that quick email off, didn't have to do some advanced analytics on that really crappy uh, Wi-Fi connection on the plane, and um, we're off. We were able to you know, solve a real business problem. And so, you know, the key point again, we, we did this collaboration, we're using multiple devices, we're leveraging multiple data sources, some of it's enterprise data that's curated and available to me in OAC, other was, you know, a quick Excel file that, you know, Dave loaded up on the fly that had some Twitter information. So they can really tie in, um, you know, what's going on in the world with what's, with what's affecting sales and allowing them to, you know, really get their job done. Any other closing comments? Um, first, we would like to invite you to some of our other sessions. We'll show more of the product that um, you have seen. Um, so Jacques, here in the second row, we'll go in uh, more depth into uh, the mobile applications tomorrow and some of the future enhancements and plans that we have for those applications. Uh, and uh, most of the blue sessions, the other blue sessions, will show you more on the data visualization products, and the orange one are the ones focusing on SB. So we'll be happy. We, what we try to show you is really a story of how we think of bringing things together and connecting people with the information so they can run their business and get, the, 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 get their question answered when they need it. Um, and uh, again, each one of these sessions will go deeper into um, different aspects of that, uh, of, of these uh, tools and capabilities. And our goal was to leave 10 minutes for questions, and if you want, I have a couple fun things I can show. But that's bonus material, so we'll open it up for questions. No questions? It was perfect? Go ahead. Yeah. Um, to be able to, to just pull things over and click. And I mean, that just doesn't all happen. Yeah, so the question was a great one. I'll try and summarize it at a high level. So he's like, what, what different groups in an organization would typically have to get involved to pull off something like this, to have the systems in place to leverage this kind of thing? Well, it, it, it's a continuum. So it could be really easy or, or it could be more challenging. And depending on your data and, and everything else will make a difference there. So first, uh, you know, going and signing up for Oracle Analytics Cloud, right? That's kind of like step one, is making sure you have the platform to be able to go do this stuff. And that should be relatively easy, but it's definitely not for like uh, your, your, your finance analyst, right? You know, you need to be a little more savvy in maybe provisioning or setting up users and things like that. So maybe more of an IT function. Once that's set up, literally anyone can just grab Excel files. Excel files and text files are easy as it comes. Take it, you can literally drag it onto the browser window and it'll load it. It'll make the best suggestions for dimensions versus attributes and line it up. And we'd like to think that our tool is built so the grammar is really easy to figure out. So like any other app or tool you use nowadays, you kind of stumble through the first few times, gives you help along the way, and you manage to get something working, then over time you can, you can work on it. So from that aspect, I think it's very little. If you want to have curated enterprise data, you want to have governed data that they start with so they're not all doing Excel, Excel file stuff, well, then that would take you know, folks from your IT department or your data-centric department to be involved and make sure you have that you know, curated system. A lot of people already have that. They have a data lake or a data warehouse they're implementing. They have those sources already available, and we can just connect right up to those. We do support more than 40 data sources, so chances are you know, your, your data source is gonna be supported and we can love that, pull that in and also we, obviously we can pull in text files and other things, so there's always a way to get the data in. Does that help answer? Yeah. Okay. In addition to that, the, the, so we showed you three products, the day-by-day -day application that uh, Matt started with. Uh, this application connects to OAC on the back end and really, um, uh, you know, find the information that you need out of that uh, uh, system. Uh, we showed you data visualization, which can uh, work either on the browser or you can even have it on your own desktop. So um, 
for some customers who want to be offline, it can be installed on their desktop and they can use it with their own Excel files. And they don't, they don't need to go to the provisioning and, and all of that. And lastly, it was Synopsys. And Synopsys is, uh, that's the free uh, product that we have that allows you to basically do self-service analytics on your phone. Uh, so, uh, and that requires no setup, no training, any Excel file or your feed data or your health data from Google, you can bring it into the application and start analyzing that without having any subscription to any service. Yeah, great point. Where? Uh, for Uh, there are a few different, I'm oh, sorry, for snaps on the phone, is there any settings you have to change for the aggregations of, of nulls? There is a setting in there that allows you to either count a null as zero or don't or ignore it. So yeah, there is a setting for that. And that just, you change that, load the data, and, and uh, it'll, it'll figure it out. So there's only about four or five settings, and most of them aren't really that, you know, they're, we, we made them really consumer friendly. So um, I think it'll be pretty easy to, to work through that. Any other questions? Should I dare demo something cool? Dare, please dare. You get the slides? I need the slides. Yeah, yeah the slides. All right, and then we'll leave it like that because we'll bring the phone up next to it. All right, I'll try and show you a couple non-GA things that we're, that we're just experimenting with because we have an extra eight minutes here. So we had this idea. Um, let me bring up the phone. Let's see if I can pull this off. Uh, here we go. Uh, why does this keep coming up? All right, so we had this idea. Uh, I'm going to have to shrink this down. I'll do this, sorry. Of, you know, there might be data in the physical world that I can't get out of a system. Sorry, I'm trying to manage this demo. It's harder than I thought. Um, and so why not have the ability to be able to go get that data without having to type it or enter it or whatever? So we have this little experiment feature that we're playing with where, let's see if this works, where I can use the camera to start scanning my data and I can actually do some augmented reality and enable a chart to just visualize the data on the fly and come back here, and if I want to, I can actually capture this data. Oh, I hit the wrong button. Sorry, I hit my power button instead of my volume button. We're working on making this easy to do with one hand. There we go, capture some data. Accept, and it'll just build a project where I can start you know, analyzing that data right on the phone. Um, look. We don't think a whole bunch of users are going to start taking pictures of printed tables. But the idea is there's these use cases that go beyond this, that, that maybe you're in a crowd or a, a, a setting like this and we want to do a quick survey. So why not do analytics on that quick survey as people raise their hand to know whether or not they're um, uh, you know, uh, saying yes to something or no to something. Attempt to maybe break it down using facial recognition techniques to is it males or females who are voting a certain way and things like that. Um, so there's a lot of cool stuff out there. We also um, are experimenting in the same vein with the idea of nutrition labels. So I need to bring up the phone again, sorry about this. So let's, let's see how Captain Crunch does. So I'm gonna take a picture of this. And so, you know, it should learn from the label that it's a nutrition label. There we go. And starting to build those things. And then I'll parse that. And the way we handle nutrition is we, we create a, we have a little project called nutrition so you can just add all your labels. So, see our, I'll just say crunch. Okay. And then here is my nutrition facts. And you know, over time I've scanned, oh, I guess I only did one. Um, if you scan like a whole bunch, right, over time you're going to have a whole bunch of nutrition information that you can kind of compare, you know, is, should I eat my Frosted Flakes or Captain Crunch or Kashi Golene? 
I think we, I think we know the answer, but Captain Crunch is delicious. So. so just some kind of fun things we're experimenting, and also fitness data, right? The, we have sample apps on here. Um, that we, we, you know, we, we put in this movie sample app. We thought, oh, we'll put some, something you know, very consumer friendly. But the best sample is your own information. So I'm just going to do Google Fit. I thought I was going to do Google Fit. Oh, let's do this. Uh, again, it's not GA yet. So I'm going to open Fit. Uh, and now I'll try one last time. Choose my account, loads the data. And you know, I don't know if you guys use fitness trackers, but they usually give you a daily view, right? They give you what's happening today and maybe a historical line chart. But you know, we're analytics and we love analytics, so I really want to get into the details of my fitness information. So let's look at calories by date and start to do some, you know, let's uh, maybe put some seasonality into it. Let's make that stacked or make it stacked this way. And you know, break it down and get more analytics about what I'm doing. We're not trying to be a fitness app, but we're just the, the concept here is if it's data, we can analyze it. So just some kind of experimenting and some interesting consumer features that you'll see starting to hit Synopsys, along with all the enterprise features that we're going to land, like connectivity to OAC, you know, better improved anal analytics and new visualizations. So a little fun at the end. And Jacques, I hope you're doing more day by day focus. So Jacques' session tomorrow, if you're interested in day by day, is going to be really focused on that product. And so I didn't steal any Miss Thunder by showing that. And um, you're going to you're going to have a, a great session to go to there, among the other ones. The other thing I want to note is I, a lot of hands went up with S space. This could have been all S space data, right? S space is a data source in OAC, so you could have just loaded your S space data into it or from Analytics Cloud, and you could be using day by day to analyze s space data, and you could be using, you know, potentially synopsis to load that s space data directly from OAC into your phone. Basically start asking your s -Base cube some questions. Yeah. In. Another question back there? Nope? Okay. Oh, one more. Yep. Yeah, so, so it, um, what it does is it, it reads the first part of your data file to figure out, we don't do one row, we do more than one row, to figure out where the header rows are and what the data types are. It's a great, I'm sorry, the question is if I have a data file that has, you know, everything's a date and then suddenly it says the word wow. You know, like what's going to happen? So. Uh, what we do in, in really OAC or Synopsys, we read the first certain amount of rows, um, and then we, we figure out what type it is, and then we go with that type going forward. And then if we hit something that's not that type, we throw it out as a null, and we use that same null setting I alluded to earlier to decide whether we count that as an element row. Do we remove the whole row? You know, is it valid data at all? And then in OAC, uh, it goes even beyond that. You know, if we're looking out forward looking, not, not quite in this release, where our, our data preparation tools are going to allow uh, cleansing of that data, you know, or self-healing of that data, where it will actually fill in dates based on um, looking at other areas of the file to figure out what might be the best guess there, okay? So totally would handle that type of file. You don't really have to worry about that. In Synopsys, we try and make it ac absolutely um, transparent to the user. We don't want them having to deal with data types and files and things like that. But um, in OAC, you have a little more power to really cleanse that data source. Does that answer your question? Great. So we run out of time, but uh, again, we'll be happy to see you one of our other sessions, and we will be on the expo floor for the next uh, two days that uh, I think we got left. So we'll be happy to answer any additional questions and show you more of the product capabilities. So thank you. Thanks.